Hi, everyone. Welcome to XAPI Cohort. I'm sorry we're starting just a tad bit late today, and I'm going to kind of go power through these um, slides just so we get everything done and get to our two case studies. So first and foremost, XAPI Party, please come and join us April 27th, 8 to 2 p.m. Pacific time. It's all online. I'll drop a link in chat and you can register for it. Please, please, if you are participating in the cohort and creating anything, anything on your XAPI journey, we want to see it. So we want you to submit your uh, call, uh, your work as a call for proposal uh, by March 31st. And again, I will drop that link in in just a minute. April 12th through the 14th, Learning Solutions, a great, great place to be. And we have two XAPI oriented sessions that are there up on your screen. If you are not a Guild member, feel free, please, please, please join us. You get a lot of uh, free resources and it's a great learning community. And so we're very excited to do that. At the end of our case studies, I'll be looking to, for people to do their project demo updates. I've got a few names, but uh, please, if you wanna make a project a demo update, just private message me over in the chat and we'll make sure we get you on the product uh, project update. And right now I'm going to stop sharing and turn it over to Nicola, who will give us a, a case study in XAPI. Okay. Thank you, uh, Karen. Good morning uh, to all the participants. I'm going to share the presentation. Okay. Let's go. Uh, here I am. This is a, a funny way to present myself. Uh, my main goal is uh, to bring uh, XAPI into organizations. I do it uh, training uh, to training uh, and uh, consulting projects. Uh, and uh, I, I try to make it uh, using uh, a creative way to uh, design uh, this, uh, this uh, project. Today I will talk you about uh, how actually use uh, the XAPI in uh, classrooms, and I want to it, and I want it to be a concrete example to demonstrate that we can fulfill the promises that XAPI release made uh, ten years ago. Ten years ago, I remember it was in Milan, and uh, I see the amazing presentation by Aaron Silvers and Mike Rastici, uh, all the slides that still represent a reference point for understanding XAPI and uh, represent roots, the roots of uh, those promises. What promises? Uh, many, all centered around the concept of freedom from the limits of the browser, from synchronicity, from other designing constraints. During these uh, 10 years with XAPI, I've learned uh, many things. XAPI goes beyond the context of the e-learning industry. It's not simple. It requires uh, study and a different design approach. What kind of approach? You need to know the specification deeply, but you need to think outside of the box. You need to be fast and flexible using low code and no code tools or automation apps. You need to start from the meanings you want to capture from experiences, translate them into pilot projects quickly and transform collected data in those meanings. 
The case I'm presenting today is how to use XAPI in a classroom training context. It's my way, it's one way, but you can elaborate your way to use this approach. What do we know about classroom today? Usually few things about the starting point and the ending point, but what happens in the middle? This is uh, the project. And this is a simple setup. We can add complexity, but for understanding the approach, it's fine. What do you have in the classroom? We have a trainer, we have some content, we had uh, learners, and these three elements interact with each other. And uh, we want to know the intensity and the quality of these interactions. So we can design an, uh, a classroom enhanced by XAPI. Of course, uh, we will need uh, uh, an LRS and uh, a way to create reporting. We can use any configurations and uh, I usually adapt it uh, to my client's uh, uh, preferences. We add a digital layer to enable interaction in the classroom. We follow the rule, no smartphones, to avoid the distractions and make the experience more fluid, more intuitive. We give uh, an eight-sided cube that allows the trainer to advance the topics covered with real-time precision. He is free to move among the topics or to follow a sequence. Then we keep the classroom with a hub, this, uh, this one, this is a small hub, really, really small. This hub can collect, can collect the interaction of smart buttons, smart buttons that are used by the learners and by the, the trainer. We can manage up to 62 buttons per hub with a fairly wide range of action. These interactions through different types of internet connection will be sent towards an additional layer that we can call tracking and automation layer. We'll see how it how it was made, this uh, layer. The last element we provide to the trainer is a, a smartwatch, allowing to manage notifications and interact further with learners. The real learning record provider in this uh, setup is the tracking and automation layer that send statements to LRS. How do, prepare, how do we prepare the event? The trainer sets the pairing between topics and cube faces on Timular. Timular is the brand application for this cube. This is the cube. You see eight faces. We can add also stickers or numbers to help you to better understand uh, uh, the topic you are, you are selecting. And you can create several spaces uh, and switching uh, among these spaces to create a predefined uh, setup, okay? Then uh, the trainer puts information on Google Sheets about the actions to be tracked by on the buttons, the participants, the button pairings, which verbs to use, and so on. We can define all 
all the things. Then we set the triggers and automation on Zapier so that every time an interaction is received, Zapier retrieves the various information from Google Sheets on the fly and on the fly elaborates the preset JavaScript code sending the statement or the statements to the LRS. We can create many automation and within each automation, we can decide to send one or more statements depending on XAPI data governance choices. But let's get to what happens in the classroom during the, the session, during the lesson. The trainer rotates the cube, advancing the topics, starting and completing the topics of the lesson. Ta Timular uh, settings uh, <clears throat> activate Zapier triggers that send statements and update Google Sheets to keep them ready for any interaction from the learner's button. And indeed, and indeed the learners properly informed interact with the, the lesson press the button in three different modes, which have been set up on the hub. One click, for example, is for, I like the topic. Double click is for favorite this topic. Hold is for, I request attention by the trainer. These are just example. You can choose the verbs, you can choose the action you want to track inside the, uh, the environment during the lesson. And you can, uh, you are free to change uh, the verbs uh, among uh, different uh, lessons. Okay. As before, the button's interaction activates the triggers from Zapier, which retrieves information on Google Sheets, sends the statements, and uh, in case of specific uh, uh, interaction, for in this case, uh, for example, the hold, uh, the request attention interaction, uh, the trigger can activate uh, other um, another automation using, for example, another uh, automation uh, tool that sends a notification to the trainer smartwatch, who can also tie his interaction to that specific notification. For example, if Karin has requested attention, I can track and record whether I have replied to a request to a request or not. Likewise, the trainer with his button, and the button is here, with this uh, elegant clip, so you can uh, clip uh, to your uh, shirt, okay? And the trainer, so, uh, can track uh, his interactions freely during the lesson marking perhaps uh, the points that uh, were most liked uh, or those that, that received the most attention or adding a simple bookmark to fix a particular moment. As you see, you can set a different action for a specific button. Obviously, you can also uh, make a different action for each uh, of the participants, but uh, it's, uh, it's like a mess. But uh, if you want, you, you can. With uh, a little attention, we can keep the Zapier trigger codes fixed 
And even a non-expert people can update the Google Sheets. At the end, what do we get with this uh, approach? Do you remember where we started? We wanted to understand what happened during the session. Now we have thousands of statements that tell us uh, about the interaction that have taken place and we can analyze them based on topic, type, and frequency. Or consider the point of view of learners, trainer, or both of them. Now XAPI, in addition to the beginning and end of the lesson, tells us what happened during the lesson offering a flow of events that give us an overall understanding of how it went. Also providing details regarding the topics and both participants and trainers. And you see the bookmarked uh, uh, icons stand for the the interaction of the trainer and the yellow one is the request, uh, hold the request by the learners, for example. <clears throat> so at the end, uh, I invite you to dive into this uh, magical no code, low code world, explore new tools, new smart device uh, without limit, without, uh, with, a, with a creative approach. And uh, discover new ways to apply them in XAPI project. So obviously I am uh, uh, available for questions. I can also answer to your uh, questions in the in the chat uh, and uh, I leave uh, the stage to Karin and uh, Khalid. Thank you very much and I hope I haven't bored uh, you. Thank you so much, Nicola. Uh, I don't think you've bored us. I think we had some great, uh, very cool there. And a lot of people are thanking you for your use case there. Uh, I have a Timeular myself and um, I found this very fascinating. So oh. it's great. If you have any questions, please go ahead and type them in the chat. and. <laughs> Nicola will be here to answer them. Right now we have Khalid who will be, pre be presenting his use case. So Khalid, if you can go ahead and get started on sharing. Hello. Hi. Um, it's nice to be here with you all. Uh, thanks for uh, Karin. Thanks for Nicole for your good presentation. I had really go uh, got a uh, nice experience from your side also. I would like to um, share my experience with the uh, real usage of XAPI. Uh, let me introduce myself. My name is Khalid. I am for, uh, like uh, working in National E-Learning Center in Saudi Arabia. Um, what is the, uh, the the real need for using the X API in our project? That's what I'm going to uh, share with you today. Actually, in National E-Learning e Center, it's a government uh, entity that needs to um, build a learner profile, or we can call it a learning passport for each and every individual having e-learning in uh, our across multiple platforms. When we say across multiple platforms we mean that uh, it's not one platform no, not two three it's hundreds and maybe thousands of platforms nationwide so it's a challenging project but we have to work uh, we have uh, we had to first work with few 
uh, LMSs so that we can uh, start expanding after that. Let me share my screen and elaborate a little bit more or go at least uh, deeper or more. Be more I'm starting to share my screen. I hope it will go fine. Okay. So that is the aim of the project. The, the real aim is to uh, build a learner passport, or in some cases, it's called learning profile or learner profile. Uh, it's used to uh, make a specific uh, use or a specific, uh, uh, let's say, a history or a profile for each and every individual. Uh, the other aim is to build a recommender system that can uh, direct the user to what is the next course or what you need to learn to achieve a certain goal or to build or to achieve certain career or occupation. Adaptive learning, or uh, in, in fact, uh, the adaptive learning is uh, is one of the like main goals for this project. You know, when you collect uh, learner information across uh, or during the, his learning journey, you can easily make out what this learner is able to learn. How can he learn uh, when he will face problems according to data that is collected during his learning journey? And thanks for the XAPI integration, we are using that to collect all these activities, even granular activities we are collecting to make the adaptive learning real and be more specific and more accurate. That's the one example. The second example, uh, how did we implement that? Okay, we have the LRS here, and we, uh, here I, I made one LMS, a second LMS, and it can be LMS number N, N number of LMSs. All these LMSs will uh, send their information to the LRS. The LRS is located in National E-Learning Center, we call it NELC. So, a learner might, uh, in one day, a learner with the national ID or a name, suppose he's having this uh, ID, he started his learning journey by taking some courses on LMS1. Maybe another day, the same learner will go to LMS5 or LXP, for example, and he can take another course. What will happen, actually? This learner, by learning some objectives or some courses in different uh, LMSs, in fact, he's gaining some skills. Okay, these skills can be gained from different platforms, but mainly, or it will be aggregated and collected in one place so that we can easily build the learner passport. The learner passport here, it contains many things, but we focus here on, uh, during uh, this session, we are uh, uh, concentrating on the skill side. So what we collect when we integrate uh, these LMSs, the uh, diverse LMSs, we collect user enrollment or the uh, student enrollment in any course, uh, the course initialization, uh, the consumption of uh, videos, completing the lessons or units and watching the videos, attempting quizzes, the, the score of each and every quiz. Uh, we are measuring even the learner progress across different courses. Uh, we are uh, tra tracking even the completion of the course, and <clears throat> we also track even the, uh, the, the course rating by uh, the learner so that we can make uh, the similarity or the, uh, let's say, the recommender system will uh, give a higher rate for the highly recommend, uh, rated uh, courses. Finally, we collect and we track even the learning certificate. Here in the National E-Learning Center, we can um, like get a copy of each and every learner certificate once he will gain or get that certificate. Uh, for collecting all these informations, we have, um, we have used uh, we have collected many uh, concepts from different profiles. For example, we have collected the initialized, registered, watched, um, completed, progressed, all these verbs. We have collected also the activity types. We have collected even many, many extensions and context extensions. It's uh, 
uh, X API uh, JSON keys and, and, and values, you can see here in the picture or here in this window, that is a real X API statement and how it looks like. Maybe it will look uh, a bit smaller. So I have divided this statement into two parts so that with a larger view. So here we have the main uh, keys, that is the actor and the verb uh, and the object. The actor, for example, here we are using the mailbox. In the place of the name, we have used or replaced the real name or the alphabetical name with the national ID. Then, the, 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 uh, why we use that? In uh, when we in, in sometimes the learner name can be similar across maybe hundreds, well, sorry, hundreds of thousands of. Uh, learners, when we gather or we collect all this information, it will be easily uh, trackable by using the national ID. And names can be duplicated uh, for different learners, and that's a big issue and big problem. That's we. Uh, that's why we have used the national ID and its unique ID. The verb and the object. That is how it looks like. The second slide. Okay, here we are using the uh, context. We are preserving the name of the, of the instructor giving this course or teaching that course, the platform and the language. What do we mean here by platform? Platform, as I said, we are collecting data from thousands, currently from hundreds of platforms, but the aim is to go for thousands of platforms. So um, <clears throat> the platform that this value or uh, we, actually provided to the, to each and every learn, learning entity uh, uh, so that uh, we can easily track this student or this course is provided or given by which platform or which entity. A learner can go through different entities or different platforms and gain some different uh, skills from different courses from different LMSs or LXPs. The extensions here, we are getting the full name of the uh, platform so that we can even make dashboards or reporting uh, reportings uh, either by learner or by course or even by the uh, entities or the LMSs giving these courses. We can track which LMS is giving uh, good quality resources, having higher, higher rates, more students, what skills are provided from each and every LMS so that uh, we can easily make out or track or control even the learning activities across all these uh, platforms. Here we are getting what skills are learned by that course. For example, it's system analysis, artificial intelligence, that is in competencies. This skills getting, uh, he, he got maybe Python, deep learning, whatever. It can be two, three, four skills, M much, much more skills can be gained. Context activities, that is, uh, for example, uh, when you watch a video, that video must belong to a parent video, or when you complete a unit or learning unit, you have to uh, know what uh, what is the course that this unit is belonging to. So here we find that the course ID, for example, is this, uh, this way, and uh, here, each and every, like uh, the, the course type or the object type here is a course. So that is the parent object. We preserve it in the context activities under the parent key. That is how an X API statement looks like. Okay, initially for this project, actually we have started this project almost one and a half year back. Initially we started with a learning locker that is a great open source uh, uh, LRS. You can uh, start with it to implement real life projects. But after that, we have shifted to an enterprise solution, which is uh, provided from Veracity Learning. We are having good experience with Veracity team, thanks to them. Okay, here we have, uh, inside that LRS, we have built two LRSs, one for the production, the real statements or real data that is uh, streamed to our LRS. And the other one is the staging LRS. The staging LRS is used for uh, qualifying the LMSs to send trial data so that we can investigate or check these statements. Are they in the real format that we are that we, we expect to receive from them or not? 
Actually, you know, as I said, we are working with different LMSs. So these LMSs must know what verbs we use, what, what concepts, what uh, how we use them, how we build our statements, in what format we need. So we, we used to have many sessions, like you can say introduction or training sessions with these LMSs. Uh, I mean the LMS technicians or developers so that we can transfer our needs to them so that they align with it. During this uh, qualification for the LMS or the entity, we use the staging LRS so that they can send their uh, sandbox data to it. So that after that, once they get ready to uh, put their real data to the LRS, then we move them or shift them to the production LRS. Inside this uh, LRS, actually, uh, like Learning Locker or even the uh, uh, Veracity LRS, you can build uh, many, many, or as many as you want LRSs for the different purposes. That's how the statements look like in a, tab in a, in a tabular view once we open the, uh, the, the, the LRS statements. So we find, for example, uh, that this learner with the national ID or the actual uh, the actor actually I have uh, replaced the real national IDs with a fake one just for privacy or uh, security policy issues and uh, I have replaced them with a zero to nine uh, digits so this learner has watched this object this object is a lesson or let's say it's a video in fact and this uh, it is uh, coming or streamed from this platform that is msaaq whatever the name of the lms is coming just like that so we are receiving different different um let's say uh statements from different platforms for example the first five statements are coming from one platform the remaining statements are coming from even different platform And here it's a dashboard. We are uh, uh, testing how many like uh, statements are coming from each and every, um, okay, from each and every LMS. Okay, actually I'm running out of time. So I will try to uh, give a fast, okay, that's dashboards. We can use dashboards, whatever. What are the challenges we are facing? Actually, as I said, we are uh, collecting data from different or diverse LMSs. So collecting this uh, from different uh, sources is a really challenging uh, issue. Um, thank you for watching. Thanks for the support from the XAPI uh, community. I'm happy or uh, it will be my pleasure to share my exper experience with anyone who want to have deep or profound uh, more knowledge on this project. You can contact me on uh, Twitter, Facebook, uh, sorry, Twitter, LinkedIn, or through my email. Uh, thanks for you, Kalin. All right, thank you so much. Uh, that was great, a wonderful presentation. If you could just stop sharing very quickly. And I'm going to just remind people that uh, we have the ability to meet in AirMeet at the tables. So when you are uh, left from this session, when we end the session here, you can go over to the lounge and there's tables. So you can go ahead and uh, share your project ideas and brainstorm and do all those wonderful things here in AirMeet. And those tables are available 24 seven. And uh, Khalid, can you stop sharing? There we go. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. I am going to go ahead and uh, share our windows here. Just I had that graphic up, whatever. But you can go ahead and, and create your own table. So if you go to those three dots and edit, you can say storyline or whatever. Now we're going to go to our uh, teams here. And I have someone who is going to be presenting for us for the uh, Storyline Spring. And that is Bethany Klein. And when I get Bethany here, I'm gonna go ahead and I've invited Bethany to the stage here. And there is Bethany. Hello, Bethany. Oh, 
Oh, this is super easy. I've never presented on AirMeet before. Um, yeah. Hi, everyone. This will be a really short update. Our team is really still in the forming stage. Um, so I'll post in the chat our team. We're Team Storyline Spring 23. The vast majority of our group were uh, mostly novices in Storyline. A few of us have observed co cohort a few times, but we realized that we're not going to be able to have any, we're not going to be able to take advantage of the skills until we actually put it into practice. So our goal is, is really simple. We're uh, essentially attempting, we have um, a course that one of our members in Storyline has created, and we're essentially trying to map how users are interacting with some really simple features in the course. If we have enough time, we would also like to visualize that data. Um, but again, we're still in the very, very early stages. We have the course. Our next steps are to set up the LRS. And uh, again, I'll post our um, Team Slack channel in the chat. If you're a specifically a beginner, we'd love to have you because we're all learning together. If you have expertise in Storyline and implementing XAPI, we'd also love to have you too. Um, we meet after cohort every week. Um, 12 p.m. Pacific time, and we're going to meet in the tables. And um, Karen, I'm not sure if you can remind me if I think you created a table for us last week. Do we have to recreate each week? Give it myself. Yeah, yeah you do. You, you oh, don't. Okay. I. You do only oh. be. I actually, I'm not sure. It may still be there. If someone didn't overwrite it, it may okay. still be there. Um, right. I post your team in there. So thanks so much, Bethany. Really appreciate yeah. it. Yeah, All right, great. I did not receive anybody else. I'm going to go ahead. I did not receive anybody else who wanted to present today. I mean, they did want to present. Let me let me rephrase that. They did, but unfortunately, they couldn't for various reasons. So, but I did get a team update via email. And I am going to go ahead and just kind of read this so you know. This is one that we have not seen in our list from last week. Um, and they are called team, uh, you know, hashtag teams dash healthcare dash EQ. So they've been developing a training course on emotional intelligence in leadership. And so far they've created the prototype using Adobe Captivate and made the course available to learners through Squirm Cloud LMS. So using both the Squirm Cloud LRS, they viewed the XAPI data in initial data included verbs, experienced, attempted, launched, correctly answered, and passed. And so they're they're going to aspire to get more data, including statements on the video portion of the course, which would be, for example, initialized, played, seeked, pause. They're also working within the advanced action script window in Captivate to send custom statements using JavaScript. We're also working out some kinks on the implementation side related to getting the LRS to recognize all the features of the course and of multiple users. So that is for team healthcare. I'm going to just grab this title if I can, and I'll post it in the chat. And we can, if you're interested in that, um, please join them. And there is their link. Now, other than that, we are um, almost out of time, but I just want to just let you know we have Team Articulate Cornerstone, Team Captivate Cornerstone, Team Chat GPT. Team Chat GPT is really just on fire. There's so many posts in there. Go and look in there. And of course, Chat GPT is amazing and everybody is talking about it so there's a lot of work going on in there team dungeons and dragons they've come up and they're starting to put some things together so if you're a D, &D fan that's where you want to go there's also fall 22 uh, vr ar xr that was a project started last fall and uh, they're continuing now so hopefully if you're interested in vr ar or xr which is the same uh then please go and join them and then, of course, we have Spring 23 Twine. Um, if that, and with Storyline Spring 23 is what we had here. Those are all the teams that I'm personally aware of. And what we can do is you can go up to the channels, browse channels, search on hashtag team, and then put a filter of most recent. And that should give you the most recently formed teams there. 
And um, I hope that will help all of you. I hope I've gone over a couple of minutes. I'm sorry about that. But I hope you all have a great rest of your day. Keep those projects coming. Please, please consider making a little few seconds, few minutes of what your project's doing. We all want to learn and we all want to know. And it really doesn't take much. You, and as you heard from Bethany, it's really easy. You just get on here and you talk. So I hope to see you see more of you next week. And with that, I'm going to end the session. You'll be put back out in the reception, go to the lounge and talk with your teams.